Well, Kevin, it's so wonderful to actually meet you face to face because we've been doing this like this. The virtual thing <laughs> for so while. long. Yeah, yes. so it's a joy. So thank you for agreeing to be part of this series. Oh, thank you. It's so great to actually be here and see you in person and to, again, be talking about all this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, I'd love for you to just jump right in and talk about your dance background, about your faith, just whatever you want to share to give us some insight about who Kevin Jenkins is. All right, that's a great question. Who is Kevin Jenkins? Um, so I, I think sometimes about what makes us as people, I think it usually comes down to a couple things, and I think the first thing is that I'm a Christian. Um, but very quickly following that, I would say that I'm one of ten kids. That wow. is incredibly formative, I think, to who I am, both as a choreographer, both as a believer, and just as a person. And I'm the second oldest of 10 kids. Okay. We have five boys, five girls. Wow. And grew up in a Christian household, which was amazing. Homeschooled. Okay. And I think that um, that shaped how I became, I think, both an artist and an entrepreneur. As, mm -hmm. a, as, as a choreographer, you have to be, it's your own business. And so um, my mom is just off the charts brilliant, both in terms of artistry, but just very intellectual. And so, um, she raised us to just be able to do our own thing. And so um, I wandered around for a while, wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And then in college I found dance mm -hmm. and I really have never looked back. And I very quickly realized I wanted to be a choreographer. And so in, in college and in the, in the performing arts program I was a part of shortly thereafter, I was taking everything, hip hop, ballet, jazz, modern, um, Persian mm -hmm. dance, ballroom, okay. everything. And um, I think the only thing I did take tap, it was tap, which, okay. which a little bit broke my mom's heart because I grew up on front of stair and oh, so yeah. she always kind of <laughs> secretly hoped I'd go into tap and I didn't. Um, but I do basically everything else and that has really served me as a choreographer because um, not only I think it keeps things fresh, mm -hmm. I'll do a piece that's very balletic in one place and then I'll go and do something a lot more contemporary and then I'll come back to ballet but it's a little based on this sense of like partnering that comes from ballroom. Um, I did this uh, French piece to all this French pop music that I used like a bunch of Persian hands to oh, it to like cool. kind of like show sass. Yeah. And so I, I find that like it keeps me from being bored. I hopefully it keeps the audience from being bored yeah. if you come see multiple pieces of mine. And um, yeah, that's been amazing. I've been able to travel the whole country now for the last like five years. I think I've been pretty much traveling nonstop, mm -hmm. just um, all over and working with schools, working with companies, universities. Um, I was able to set my first ballet on a Christian company in uh, just before the pandemic, which was huge for me because I've um, I've done a few pieces that were overtly faith-based, um, but never had I worked with a whole company that was all about spreading God's love and, and that message. And so that was incredible for me. And that piece was called Still Waters, based on Psalm 23, talking about the leading, leading us beside Still Waters. Uh, and that was a really amazing experience, and I think um, that is what connected me to you. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Juliana, the director there, mm -hmm. you know, got us all connected, and then you connected me to the even wider <laughs> Christian dance world, which I didn't know existed, and I felt so alone for so long. Um, and it's so wonderful to, to realize there's so many of us out there. So that's Kevin Jenkins in a nutshell, that's I suppose. <laughs> so 10 kids, mm -hmm. are any of them artists? Yeah, most we all have an artistic sensibility. Okay. A lot of us are more uh, overtly artistic in the sense that we pursue it as a career. Okay. Uh, my older sister is a piano teacher, and uh, several of my younger sisters are authors. Oh. Um, one actually is just um, just published and um, has this huge following online. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we all we all love the arts. I think I think we all love going to see shows, even the ones of us who learn to work standard corporate jobs like my brother he's a he's a vice president of his department at Wells Fargo but he loved acting in college and he still he still loves doing that yeah. kind of stuff so I think in any of those leadership positions you need to have a little acting background right so I mean just so to be true. able to pull on like okay who are, uh, is my audience today or who is my oh, you know staff people that I'm working with and like what's the mood of the crowd because <laughs> you're just always having yes. to deal with people and so I think it's probably a beautiful thing to have. Yeah, I, I think any performance training stands you in good stead. Yeah. Whether it's job interviewing, leading yeah. people, giving speeches, yeah. all of that. Yeah, that's so yeah. important. Yeah. But your mom sounds amazing. 
Oh my gosh, she's incredible. I don't know how she did it. She had 10 kids and homeschooled most of us for a good portion. So at certain times we'd go, um, I, didn't, I didn't personally ever go to a public or private school, but some of my younger brothers and sisters mm -hmm. found that they just did better there. And then sometimes they'd come back for a year and homeschool. So she did all of that. And now that she, uh, you know, all the kids are grown, um, now she writes musicals. And I think in the last six years, she's written something like 35 oh, musicals. Wow. <laughs> She just, she also has a, a weaving, weaving and jewelry business. I mean, she just, yeah. I, I have no idea how That's she does it. the Proverbs 31 woman. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's so beautiful though that it yeah. has been filtered down to the family. Um, three adult married children is what we have. That's and right. we homeschooled everyone. So really? We matriculated into oh the university at 15. Each mm -hmm. one of them started taking classes at university. So we did this homeschool thing and a part of our um, world was because my husband's a singer songwriter musician pastor oh, cool. we traveled a lot we travel globally and we oh just gosh. did uh, plane school train school just really amazing so I yeah. can understand I think and it's, it's nothing against the regular school system right I think obviously most people go to regular schools or private schools and and they have wonderful lives and they have amazing educations but I think there's something when um, when a parent does have the ability, yeah. and, and not a lot, of, not all parents do either because they work or whatnot, but when you, you know your kid in a different yeah. way, and so you're not trying to teach them as an apple when they're an orange, you're yeah. not trying to uh, force them into a mold that doesn't fit them just to pass a test right. so that they can say they accomplished yeah. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's more, I think, for us when we were schooling, it was really like we would school at the grocery mm -hmm. store, right? Oh, Just, totally. You're constantly thinking about those mm -hmm. life skills and not separating that out from here's the textbook and the right. physics work that you have to do to here's the things we practically want to be able to help you yeah. become a good human to contribute to society and that's part of it. I mean, my dad brought me on and I started helping balance the family checkbook, the checkbook back then. That's mm -hmm. how long ago it was. Um, but I started understanding how to run a budget when I was 12. That's great. And so, you know, most people don't understand yeah. how to run a budget until they are wildly in debt at 24. Yes, it's true. <laughs> and then they all of a sudden have a crash course in it. Yeah. And I understood, and we, you know, my dad had a great job, but we had 10 kids. We were on a yeah. very tight budget, so I understood how to yeah. keep things, you know, conservative, but still live. My mom believes in living a wildly glorious That's life, so regardless of how much money you have. I love it. So, oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah, I hope to meet her someday. <laughs> yeah, you would love her. She's incredible. <laughs> Well, talk a bit about just this integration of your faith with your mm -hmm. artistry because growing up in a Christian environment and being an artist and predominantly working in the marketplace and not necessarily in a Christian arena as yeah. an artist, can you talk a bit about that, just that fusion of faith? Yeah, I, I honestly struggled with it for a long time because I wondered what is, what is my ministry as a Christian? Um, you know, I feel so called to be a choreographer, and I feel like this is, while I, I had many interests growing up, this is, I found this, and it seems to be what I'm uh, really great at, and that, you know, I'm very much experiencing inspiration here, and benefits and blessings here. So, I started for a long time reconciling that with that, that sort of feeling that I think a lot of Christian kids have, is like, we should all be pastors, mm -hmm. we should all be missionaries, yeah. we should all, you know, um, go stand on a street corner and save people. And, uh, I had this moment in church one day where I realized, I, I can't remember if it was a specific song that was being sung or a verse, but it was just this sense that actually, as a Christian, my whole life should be mm -hmm. uh, a witness to him. And so even if I choreograph a ballet, that is not specifically about something, because ballet is also really nebulous, yeah. you know what I mean? I've seen ballets that were supposed to be about you know, neurons firing in the hippocampus, and I've seen ballets that were supposed to be about, you know, this person's experience in teen years, and quite frankly, they looked fairly similar, you know what I mean? So, so it's, <laughs> it's not a literal art form anyways, yeah. and I realized that just by creating, that God is the ultimate creator, mm -hmm. and so I think when we create, we honor him in a really okay. specific way, mm -hmm. uh, that's even different than worship, even different than than doing um, you know, acts of charity and stuff like that. I think creation is a very different way of honoring him. Mm -hmm. um, and that was what he gave me. Mm -hmm. And I think learning to run with that mm -hmm. and realize, you know, when you read um, when you read about the gifts of the spirit and you read about, you know, 
some people are an arm, some people are a leg, some mm -hmm. people are the mouth, is that the mouth is not a good arm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a terrible arm, in yeah. fact. And so me thinking, oh, I should go and be a minister, that I would be a terrible minister. You know what I mean? I don't like talking to people that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy I enjoy it one on one, but like on a huge basis, I would be terrible. I would yeah. get exhausted. Yeah. I'm really great at making ballets. Yeah. And so that was a really cool crossover moment for me to just realize that this could be a huge blessing. And then I, the more I embraced that, the more that I then got into the dance world and realized the the um, huge lack of Christian influence in this art field. And I don't know, I don't know if that's true of just the arts in general. Uh, they tend to be a very liberal um, thing. And while I have certain political liberal tendencies, um, Christians tend to be morally conservative. And so just having that kind of presence, I think, in the arts world was, I think, a huge blessing mm -hmm. and so needed mm -hmm. when you have these, you know, these kids dancing at 16, 18, 20, and they are looking up to these people who are going on coke binges yeah. and doing these horrendous um, yeah. things to themselves. And they think that's just what this world should be yeah. because they don't have other examples. Yeah. So I realized that this could be a huge blessing in just living out my life as a Christian in plain view. That alone was was I think a ministry that God called me to, and then and then it is really amazing when I have the chance to choreograph certain ballets that are specifically about the Bible or something that's personal in my faith. Um, but honestly, but again, even that's so nebulous. You know, I, I choreographed a piece about Psalm twenty three, but the truth is, you could watch it, and if you thought it was about space exploration, <laughs> you would probably be able to see that too. So. So I think I think the way um, we as artists live in the in the community of, is almost more important. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's so true, and just that aspect of you know just finding your voice, and as you're talking about um, you know not feeling adequately prepared to be a pastor or someone mm -hmm. in that you know leadership realm, um, a part of it is what is God calling us to? What is the platform that he's placed us on, what's our device for communication, and obviously mm -hmm. dance is a beautiful vehicle for communication, but I, I think it's backed up even a little further to how are we positioned to serve, and when we yeah. can really get to that place to know that the arm serves in one way and the foot serves in mm -hmm. another way and the mouth serves in a different way, that all of those have such a beautiful way of operating and navigating together to prove to be a function you know a functioning whole yes so yeah. and i think i think it's um well as christians and just human beings in general we should strive not to be egocentric at the end of the day our world is egocentric because we live in our world yeah. and i think sometimes it's hard to realize that just because i'm not the guy cutting down the trees to make the paper to use for the all the things, right? It's still going to get done. Right. I don't have to do everything, and it's impossible in this day and age to yeah. do even a small fraction of what needs to be done. And yeah. so you have to it's accept at a certain point that we all have to be made for individual reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at things in, in the God context, it makes so much sense, yeah. right? That God would make you to do that, and me to do this, and, and that we would all fit perfectly together. Yeah. Um, I think at a young age, it's hard to it's, it's, I think I think going through college age, I was. It's funny, uh, you know, we're doing this interview at Belhaven yeah. University, and I loved my years in college, but I would never want to go back because I think it's a very angsty time. Yeah. You're trying to figure out who you are. Sure. Don't miss those days. Yeah, <laughs> figuring out who you are and the comparison of others, and then mm -hmm. feeling like I've got to figure out what's the trajectory of my life. <laughs> and so yeah. I think something that I feel so important at this age is to help them to realize that, well, God will speak into that and guide you, yes. but not to necessarily get paralyzed that this is it for my whole life, because yeah. some people may work in this lane for a while, mm -hmm. whatever that might be. Yeah. Um, and in dance, it's often as a performer for a mm -hmm. while, and then you shift to choreography or you shift to teaching or yeah. administration or other realms. So. Um, just helping to free up. It's such a, I, I, again, I don't, I don't miss that time. Right. My, one of my youngest brothers is going through that now. He's in his early twenties, and and I just, it's, it's such a terrifying time because 
it takes so much trust in God because you 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 really think you're like the decision you make this week or this yeah. month or this year is going to define the course of the rest of your life. And I've had like six careers at this point, yeah. and yeah. I'll probably have another six. Yeah. I hope choreography is always one of them yeah. for the rest of my life. But I would be surprised if it was the only one for the rest yeah. of my life. My God. <laughs> 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 Sorry, let me pause real okay. quick. Well, I'd love to hear about um, just hearing the voice of God because mm. this series is learning to listen. And as a choreographer, I know there's aspects of listening for inspiration where that might come from. If it's visual art, word, yeah. just the stirring within, um, or listening to your dancers in the context of verbally or what are they saying or responding yeah. or how are they responding or you're just intuitive right you look at their body you're like oh <laughs> <Different> <laughs> kind of listening. like okay well let's see how we can go about that so just how have you cultivated listening in your life yeah so i it's a great question because i think i think um not to toot my own horn but i think i have a little bit of a unique perspective on that because the way i choreograph i've actually never talked to someone who choreographed this way so i like to throw it out there because I think it can help a lot of creatives, mm -hmm. just people in general. Um, I have learned um, that if you, you know, for, for again, for me, it's it's wonderful to have God because I, I can, before rehearsal, I can just give it into his hands and like yesterday I was exhausted. Yeah. Just cr brain was dead and so I just said, Lord, this, this rehearsal is yours because I had literally nothing. Yeah. Um, and, and that's amazing because God always meets me. But um, but then there's that weird place where, you know, we have to do the work too. And for me, the listening happens when I take the time to listen to what this piece should be. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I truly believe that each piece for me, I, I want it to be unique. I want it to come from a fresh place. And so for me, I start by listening to music. Mm -hmm. And and most of the time when I listen to music, I see yeah. I see shapes and I see forms and then all of a sudden I see lines and I see movement, and um, and I had this epiphany maybe 10, 15 years ago that the movement that was happening in my mind was really really good. In fact, it was better than what I was currently putting on stage. Yeah. And so I realized that if I got better at listening to that, that basically all that was going to take to become a, a deeper, more mature artist was actually to just listen more closely to what was happening, what was what the music was inspiring. Again, you know, some, sometimes I view it as what God's sending. I don't think um, I don't think that so literally spiritual because right. obviously a lot of choreographers have beautiful visions and they're they're not Christians at times. But um, again, I think all things come from God. So um, I have learned over my career to just really, even in a room of 20 people is just to quiet myself mm -hmm. and just often close my eyes and just see what is supposed to come next. Mm -hmm. And that's been a really cool experience because it's like, um, it's like learning to quiet myself in the midst of a fire. Rehearsal always feels like there's just so much going on and, 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 you know, and, and I think a lot of people my age deal with a lot of anxiety, myself included. And so learning to be able to just quiet myself mm -hmm. and just let go of everything, let go of expectations, let go of what the dancers think I'm crazy or not because I'm just moving my hands. And, yeah. and, um, and it's been really rewarded because God has helped me to choreograph things that are so far beyond anything I really, mm -hmm. I really should have been able to do. Yeah. I'm so excited by what I see because it doesn't come from it doesn't feel like it comes from me. It doesn't come from like, oh, I know where that phrase came from. I did that one in college, or I like, you know, I did that one last ballet. It's just like, oh, that's fresh, because I really just quiet myself and learn to listen to the music, to to see where the where the dancers are leading it, to see where my mind is taking it. Um, so yeah, mm, I love that. Well, it's such a, a beautiful example of God's creation, mm -hmm. right? And the creation continues to evolve. And I mean, last night, for example, my daughter brought home a plant. It's called a spider plant. Mm -hmm. Draping from the spider plant were dozens of these little babies, right? That they were ready oh, to cool. to drop off to start new spider plants. Yeah. So we 
snap the ops out and put them in water to Amazing. root to be able to start the process all over again. Yeah. <clears throat> and as you're speaking, it's making me think about that aspect of as we are in the process of connecting with God and allowing him to be that conduit mm -hmm. for us, then he's going to birth new things constantly. Yeah. And there's not a stop, right? It's no. going to continue. And, um, and expecting the unexpected, I think, is yeah. the part that um, for some can be scary because it's like, you know, it's that's not anything I've done before. Do I trust that that voice or what I'm seeing right. is actually going to be something amazing? And can you talk a little bit about that? Maybe? Well, it comes down to a lot of trust. <laughs> I think, um, you know, as a, both a choreographer and a believer, is you know you i remember the first time where i moved out and i had like really rough financial problems which financial problems back then were like probably i had like 300 dollars on something you know um and i was just like how am i going to fix this car or whatever it was and then god came through yeah. and then the next time i still freaked out and god came through yeah. and 10 years later it's not that i don't freak out every now and then because yeah. the bills are a lot bigger now yeah. but but there's this sense of like this is probably gonna be fine yeah. god's always been there and even the times when I didn't feel like he was there, then like a month later I realized, oh no, you actually were there. And so I think you you build trust both with God and then as an artist, you build trust with yourself. You you start to trust that that, that dreaming part of your mind will fire up. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it takes cultivation. You can't, you can't just hope it will and never feed it. You have to, you have to feed it. You have to, for me, it's about uh, having quiet time, about resting, about staring out the window, about watching dance, about watching great films, about watching, uh, seeing good art. For me, that that like feeds my creativity, and then I can trust that it will be there in those moments when I need it to be. That all of a sudden I'll be inspired by that painting I saw last week and be like, oh, that that abstract pattern on that painting could actually become a pattern on stage, and, and I'll be able to pull from all of that. Um, because it is terrifying as a young choreographer, I used to prepare a lot more. And I still prepare somewhat, but but I, I trust that that thing is gonna be there. And um, and honestly, it doesn't usually let me down. Yeah, that's so good. Well, that's God, yeah. right? Exactly. But well, and even just the fact that God designed our minds like that, mm -hmm. it's insane. I think <laughs> um, this is gonna sound so mean, but I think the fact that people think we evolved from like an explosion is the most idiotic thought in the planet like have you seen our minds like how is i mean i've, I've seen explosions yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing good comes out of them and i think about how our minds just our minds work and it's just it's it's crazy that that they can work at this level yeah. um and we barely begin to even tap our understanding of them and so just the fact that god can create our mind whether he's sending those specific thoughts or not like he created the source of it all yeah. Letting every thought captive. Right. And what that means. And it's not an imprisonment of captivity. It just means yeah. really trusting that the Creator is placing us in that opportunity yeah. to. In those moments with those thoughts, yeah. with those people, in that specific location yeah. to do whatever He needs us to do. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. Um, well, how would you encourage artists today? Mm. Just, I'd love to hear. You know, either from a leadership perspective or yeah. you're talking about creativity. Um, just what are we contending with out there today? Because you're there a lot. Um, yeah. How can we, as even believer artists, make more of an impression? Not necessarily trying to put on something to right. be something, but just, you know, so many thoughts come to mind. Gosh, yeah, I could take that in so many directions. But I think what I would say is that I would say two things. I would say two things is that um, the first one is to don't wait to be in your late 30s like myself to be less afraid of being a vocal Christian. Uh, and then the quick follow-up that I would have to that is be genuine. Because I think I think what a lot of um, non-believers react to is a little bit of a sense of it feels fake at times. Yeah. It feels put on like I'm trying to present that I have this great life because of God. It's like, no. I have a disaster of life. The only reason that I am even vaguely put together as God, it's not, it's not this um, this shell that you can very easily poke through. Um, and I think, 
I think people respond to that because um, because we can all smell fake. It doesn't. It doesn't. You don't. It's not hard to smell when someone's putting something on. So I think I think when you are genuine, um, and you're not afraid to just be who you are as a Christian, I think that is the most powerful thing in the world because um, because first of all, while people might not always like it or respond to it, I find they will respect it. Sure. Actually, sure. I find most of us don't respect it always, and um, and I've had so many people who wildly disagree with me on my faith, but they. They do so in a very respectful way, and then I'll see them go and totally disrespect another fellow Christian, um, simply because it just doesn't feel authentic to them. So I think, um, yeah, I think, I think we have to just be who God made us to be. Nothing more, nothing, nothing more put on. It's it's oh, most of us are a mess. Yeah, that's okay. Absolutely, that just hot mess syndrome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think um, I think we're kind of moving into an age where it's okay to talk about that kind of stuff. Not that we have to um, throw all of our mess out there all the time, but I think pretending like it's not there. Yeah. I think um, almost no, almost um, takes away our need for God. Right. We need Absolutely. God because we're such a mess, right? That's why everyone needs God, right? God didn't just come into our lives and instantly we're not a mess right, anymore. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Well, I love that part about the authenticity because it ties so well to being a dance maker, a dance craftsman, but also being a dancer, performer. Oh gosh, it's so true. If we aren't coming from that authentic place, from generosity, then people know it. I mean, you yeah. see, it's, I mean, it's so clear, right? You watch one performer doing the exact same work and you're like, okay, this one is all about themselves. And mm -hmm. it's just like, put your eyes on me. And the other one is just oozing with just, generosity it's so easy to see and people we don't we don't realize i think how naked we all are yeah. and i think i think we're walking around being like i have the most glorious clothes and it's like yeah. you're starting naked we actually all, <laughs> we all know what you look like do, do you think you're wearing yeah, clothes right yeah, now yeah. and i think it's embracing it's just being like yeah this is who i am and i think i think people respect that and people respond to that sure and i think i think um both in art yeah um I know sometimes the pieces I've made when I was the most broken mm -hmm. or when I was just going the deepest um, into some something that was scary for me, people really respond to it because it feels very authentic. Right. It's not like I'm trying to be this prestigious choreographer. It's like, no, I'm just being Kevin and I'm just putting this out there and I hope you like it. But yeah. honestly, like, I'm a kind of a mess today, so yeah. you might not. Yeah. <laughs> and people really respond to that stuff because I think what God brings out in those moments is genuine. Yeah. What's that? I being identifiable, right? Yeah. People can identify, and mm -hmm. I believe now where we are in today's world, we're attending more to mental health, emotional health, yeah. and so it's not as taboo to be able Which to say, great. you know, I'm having a bad day, mm -hmm. and if everybody really admits it, you've had probably one bad day at least in the last month, <laughs> probably least. many more, but it's just getting to that place to realize. You know, it's the masks. It's yeah. the place yeah. of what are we supposed to be? And I think as Christians, it's so much more layered on. I think so. Because there's so many supposed tos yeah. in our behavior, the way we're supposed to respond, and sometimes it's just getting wrong real that mm -hmm. allows us to be like Christ because <laughs> Christ yeah. was pretty raw, pretty real. Exactly. And he and you look at the people he surrounded himself with, and even yeah. the people that he. The Bible holds up as, you know, David was called a man after God's own heart. David was an absolute disaster. Yes. But you read the Psalms and David had this honest hunger for God. And it reminds me of the Martin Luther quote. Uh, I think it's Martin Luther. I don't know that what I'm doing pleases God, but I think that my desire to please God pleases God. Yeah. And um, we can't be perfect. Yeah. And so I think the best we can do is to um, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. No, I appreciate that so greatly. And learning how to get to that place and <clears throat> shedding some of those, yeah. you know, the layers of skin or the clothes or mm -hmm. the masks. It's mm -hmm. a challenge because it does mm -hmm. take bravery. It does take courage. Um, so I think a part of that is just even finding a community that can mm -hmm. be supportive, that can help you, help us, help me 
of one to yeah. get to that place to realize that um, it's safe. Yeah, I think that's that's a huge part too. Yeah, is having that that place that's safe, where it's safe to be vulnerable. Um, I don't think we're called to be vulnerable all the time. No, every day, right. you know, no. I don't have to tell the guy checking out my groceries at right, the store right. that you know. Right. I'm dealing what I'm dealing with that right. day, but uh, but if I don't, if I can't open up to my friends and yeah. my community, and yeah. then then that's a problem. So I think it's yeah, I think that's huge. Yeah. So much that goes into it. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It's a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah. as artists, I believe that there's that place because we're melancholic, right? We have yeah. been labeled as particularly like <clears throat> exceptionally moody people <laughs> or whatever labels that we come along be. with that which I do believe there's some truth to the artist being in touch with emotions or mm -hmm. artists being in touch with feelings that really help whatever their platform is, if it's yeah. writing, if it's poetry, if it's painting, photography, dance, um, whatever medium that is, allows people to have exposure to realize there is something raw, there is something real, there is something that, again, yeah. it comes back to that being identifiable yeah um, but just getting to that place as an artist to even recognize am I real or not real right yeah. to recognize am I doing this from an authentic place and a part of that <clears> so <throat> is environment and how we've been you know things have been cultivated yeah. or modeled for us it's just maturity too sometimes is yeah. you don't have a stone until you're a little right. older and you're like oh this is who I am right I feel like in my 20s I tried on a lot of different feelings. I'm like, is this for me or is this for me? Yeah. Um, in my thirties, I kind of figured it out, which feels a lot nicer. But it's, yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to do. And um, I think artists too, we think so deeply about things. Mm -hmm. um, thinking deeply about anything is is a great thing, and then also a dangerous slippery slope because if you really think about the state of the world, it's terrifying, and you can't. You have to kind of like, I think. Put up some guardrails, I think, yeah. is the way I think of it. Um, but it's hard. It's hard to, to not become a moody, angst, angsty yeah. artist. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do too with where you focus on. Yeah. If you're always in the news, always like, oh, this is going right. wrong. This is, you know, this is the crisis in the Middle East. This is, you know, the, the deficit in this country. This is, you know, this is the human rights violation in this country. I think you could focus on negative all day long and yeah. just become wildly depressed. And I think. At the end of the day, I force myself to go outside and look up and just see the sun shining yeah. and just realize, like, oh my god, this world is gorgeous. Yeah. And of course, there's a beautiful in there. But if I just think about all the terrible things that are happening in this specific moment, I don't think about all the beautiful things that are happening in this moment. Right now, a mother is holding her, you know, child and giving, you know, giving it a kiss and putting it to bed. And you know, <laughs> somewhere, you know, a grandfather is walking his grandchild and yeah. they're having great moments. Yeah. And it's we have to remind ourselves to think yeah. of those those things that exist in the world. Yeah. And I believe that the art <clears throat> and dance has a place to bring that beauty mm -hmm. and to bring that perspective. So can you talk a little bit about that? Just what yeah. how you value the arts or how you value dance to contribute to humanity in a positive way to maybe get us away from that yeah. place of feeling. I think dance is often used as a vehicle to expose the darkness of the world. And I think that has its place, for sure. I think that has its place, but my issue is with the percentage. I think that tends to be 80% of dance, and I would like to see it be about 40% of dance. I think dance is a great medium at sharing love, joy, beauty, um, vulnerability, humanity. Um, it can share pain, angst, um, agony, you know, abuse, all that stuff too. Um, but I don't know that it needs to share it as much as it does. Yeah. I think I think we've fallen into a a very cynical mindset right now, and I see a lot of dance artists that just so much of what they do is so heavy. Yeah. And it's not that everything has to be light and fluffy right, and right. tap dancing Broadway mm -hmm. numbers. Um, but have you been to see a really fun Broadway show? Like you come out and you feel oh, yeah, uplifted yeah, yeah. Yeah. and you feel bright and you feel yeah. like anything is possible. And I think there's a huge place for that in dance that we don't use enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. 
Yeah, it is um, dreary out there. <clears throat> yeah, it's a little dreary. <laughs> yeah, but we also know that the arts are you know, being able to be used in such profound ways. Looking at the history of dance and just going back even like the 20s and 30s, 40s, how dance was used mm -hmm. so much to both um, make political statements, yeah. <clears throat> but also how it was used to um, change political climate. Mm -hmm. And I know artists do that today in different mediums yeah. and film. We're definitely advancing, I believe, in that yeah. way. And, well, like in award shows, that's like a whole nother thing right. where people are using that as a platform to relay particular beliefs or right. whatever. Um, but allowing art itself to speak. Yeah. Um, I think there's, I think there's, yeah, exactly. There's, there's so many great um, places for, for all those things. And it, like you said, I mean, um, dance has been doing that for so long. Um, and, and I think sometimes, I think, I guess, I think it takes really great artists to do that well. When I lived in San Francisco, um, I would go see a ton of shows. And after about the 15th show about global warming, where I had paper thrown in my face, in the audience by, you know, I was just like, do we really need all the, I, I mean, yeah. I think everyone in this audience is aware right. of the, the global warming crisis, you know, I would love to see something where it's just like, hey, I would love to see a happy dance about yeah, recycling, yeah, yeah. you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show me some hope for this problem. Yeah, um, yeah that's true. Again, we, we do need, we do need those things. I know uh, people like Kyle Abraham are doing some really progressive work just exposing mm -hmm. um, certain, you know, cultural things that need to be addressed. Um, so it, again, we need we need everything. You know what I mean? We need all the parts of the body. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's just about looking at like, am I am I called to be an arm? Because there's like 50 million arms and there's not enough mouths right now or whatever. Right. Um, so I think I, I personally I feel called to make work that uplifts. Yeah as opposed to drives people into a depression and makes them sad about the state of the world. Um, and I think no matter what, at the end of the day, I think as artists, whether we're doing heavy work or a light work or um, whether we're exposing an issue, I think if we're doing our job right, we provide a solution. Yeah. I think just telling people the world sucks. Yeah. I don't know that there's actually a lot of benefit to that. Yeah. I think we all know the world sucks. Yeah, yeah. I think if you can say, this is a real challenge that we face, yeah. but there is hope. Let's all try and be better. Yeah. I think that's something that we need to do better as artists. Yeah. And I believe as believer artists, Especially. that we have tapped into, or better said, is the spirit has tapped into us. Yeah. That we have access to mm -hmm. truth. We have access to hope. We have access to solve problems. There's nothing yeah. that is incurable, nothing that mm -hmm. is um, too big, too grand, that God isn't able to transform yeah um, change in some way and getting back to that voice or getting back to those pictures mm -hmm. getting back to that place of understanding that um the voice of god is speaking and the voice of god yeah. is moving um, so how, how would you encourage believers to um, be more attentive to mm. to that and i see it really as a responsibility not just an option am i going to choose to um, share about the gospel or truth or hope or healing or love or yeah. kindness or generosity. I mean, those are so key. Just looking at even at the fruit of the spirit, and not that we have to do these literal Bible reenact reenactments, right? Um, but just you know the responsibility of the artist. Mm -hmm. What do you feel? I think we have a huge responsibility, especially as Christian artists. To share, uh, to share that, and um, and again, it, it, it varies per person. You know, some people find that it's more in the personal person interaction. Some people feel that it's all about the work they put on stage. Um, what's the saying? You don't have to do everything. Just choose something and do do as much as you can. Yeah. I think I think that's the thing is, um, and and it, it and again, it's it's tricky because listening to the Holy Spirit is such a person-by-person -person mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that I could give any true advice in just like, this is how you do it. Um, but I, if, if God controls everything and guides everything, then I think the things that he puts on my heart, the things that he puts in front of my eyes, the things that he 
causes my life to detour through and see, then I think those are the things he wants me to to um, to focus on, right? And that's that's how he usually guides me to show me, okay, this is where you need to bless people. This is where you need to speak the truth. This is where you need to do all these different things. And um, again, every artist is going to be different, but I think yeah, we have to listen to the Holy Spirit. We have to take that responsibility seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, and my wife and I, we pray, we pray every night before we go to sleep. And um, it's different every night, but a lot of times our our prayer at the end of is Lord prepares for tomorrow and shows how you would have us minister because it's going to be different every day and um, it's it's a little bit like improv you, right. you never know what it's going to be like yeah. and that's why I think um, and I think the only tangible advice I could give is be looking for opportunities I think that's the big thing is I think don't make God smack you on the back of the head yeah. with a two by four to yeah. get you to do something. Yeah. I think be looking for opportunities and yeah. you will find them. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's scary to be looking for opportunities because you, you're going to have to put yourself out there yeah. sometimes. And that's terrifying. But um, he never calls us to anything we're not ready for. Right. So it actually will be a lot less terrifying when you actually embrace it. Yeah. Now that It's been said a lot that equips equip the call and the call to equip that phrase mm. that how God will that. make sure that when he's calling us to something he'll equip us for that but yeah. he doesn't necessarily you know on the opposite you know always you know equip the call and call the equip yeah. we think that we're equipped to do something and right. so then I'm just getting myself out there in the front line and um, there is something about the nudging of the mm-hmm. spirit. There is something about that seeing it, right? To know that this is what God's placing within me. Yeah. And in that, He will provide. And there's so many times exactly. in the scriptures where exactly. just go, show up, and mm-hmm. the very words that will be the utterances of what I am to do. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot about faith. And I think I think if you were going to boil down, if you don't remember anything from this, is, <laughs> is both as an artist and as a Christian, is just you have to show up. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Show up to work every day. Yeah. And and the the choreography will pop into your head. Yeah. God will send the work to do. You know, it'll all work. Yeah. 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 Being proactive to participate with God. Yeah. Exactly. That's perfectly way of putting. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Well, any closing words just to inspire and encourage? Um, and just thank you. Yeah. Just thank you. I mean, um, you you are such a a light yourself and I am um, I know I'm not the only person who's incredibly blessed by your ministry which is um, connecting dance artists with other dance artists who are Christians and um, again I have no clue there's a network this big and it's wonderful to be part of it so it's fun to sit here and talk with you about all of this and uh, and actually do it in person <laughs> yeah absolutely well it's an honor to get to know you and it's an honor to be able to share you with other mm, people as thanks. I've had opportunity to like, have you met Kevin Keith? Like, oh no, okay. <laughs> you know, so I just love that. Or vice versa, right? Yes, yeah. People that you haven't met yet, and you haven't met yourself. Okay, it's like, ooh, it's I just like, it. how yeah. much more exciting? <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, like I'm, I'm an only child, but I wasn't. <laughs> it's like, I got all these brothers and sisters, and right. I just want the family to be bigger than exactly. 10. Exactly. Right? I want to be You're the coordinator friends. of all the family reunions. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That, was, that probably is somebody's job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, my friend, I love you. Thank right, you so much. You. Thank for you this. so I much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, awesome. awesome. That was so much fun. Oh, it's so much more fun to do it in person, too. What a godsend to, 